Hi, it's Mr. Baumgarten, back with you again for another Python programming video using Turtle. Uh, we're going to shift away from the chess theme this time and we're going to do a little bit of a tic-tac-toe exercise. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this by the end of the video. Today's video, we're going to talk about using for loops with lists, uh, also more commonly known in other programming languages as arrays. But list kind of makes sense to more the human equivalent. And before we use it with Turtle, I just want to quickly show you in a non-Turtle python -y way what a list is. Um, it might make a bit more sense this way. So a list is just anything that you want to keep a list of. So say you've got a shopping list and you need to buy some apples, uh, some bananas, uh, maybe you need to buy some rice and maybe let's throw in some, oh, do we really want to support a brand? No. Uh, let's throw in some ice cream. Maybe let's spell this correct. Okay. So I've got my shopping list and Python can process this for me using a for loop. Uh, so I can just say for item in my list, colon, print, the item is item. And I'll just quickly save this, um, uh, yeah, for list example, and run it. And we will see here, yeah, the item is apples, bananas, rice, and ice cream. So what Python has done is it's looked at my entire list and put the contents of the list one at a time into this thing called item and then run whatever's been inside my for loop. So a list starts with a square bracket, ends with a square bracket, and then each individual value is separated by commas. Now, this let's pretend this is no longer a shopping list. Uh, lists do not just have to be all of the same type, so they don't just have to be strings for here, for instance. I could stick in the number 30 and it would still work. Okay, so you can mix and match what's inside your lists. The main things, so you can have lists of numbers and you can have lists of trues and falses and whatever else you want, but you need the, the square brackets at the start, the square bracket, closing square bracket at the end, commas to separate the values. That is how you make a list work. And then to just run through your list, it's just, okay, so this is creating a variable called item and the value of item changes every time I run through the loop. Or the next thing that's in the list. Really quick and easy. But we So let's go back to how we're going to use this now inside our turtle situation. And so I've got a tic-tac-toe screen uh, and so I'm drawing a couple of horizontal bars, I'm drawing a couple of vertical bars. I haven't bothered making four loops for those because uh, yes it is repetition but it's only repeating twice. It hasn't quite reached my annoyance threshold yet. And I've made up a function to draw a cross and a function to draw a naught, which is the zero, uh, the big O in the middle. You can see there it's drawing a circle. Uh, I did a little bit of math to figure out the positioning. So basically with the X, Y value on both of these functions, I will provide the X and Y of the top left corner of the box. And then I've done the math to work out you know, okay, I need to shift in side a little bit to draw the circle and shift a little bit here to draw across, change the heading, draw, go forward. I use Pythagoras to come up with that number. And then I go to uh, the starting position of the next line, change my heading, and then draw that line and so on and so on. So I've got a function for cross, I've got a function for naught, and they just work. So I provide the top left corner of the box and it draws them. So if I want to draw this cross in this box down here instead. So this is a 600 by 600 pixel screen. So each box is 200 by 200. My center point is here. So to draw, where did I say I was gonna draw it here? Uh, so this would be positive 100 on the X and positive 100 on the Y. So if I want to move my cross there, 100, 100, I'll run this and it should work. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's drawing my cross in my new correct space. 
how can I use a list for this? Oh, I'm going to use a list to keep track of what shape should appear in which square. All right, so this is my game board. Uh, or let's call it let's call it pieces. So my square brackets, and I'll just use an uppercase X and an uppercase O to represent what I want to draw, uh, and maybe an empty one to say that nothing's there. All right, uh, let's see what else do I need to put in. Uh, if I want to do, 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 let's put in an, another X, another empty, and another O. Let's see what that does. So I have nine values in my list corresponding to the nine squares on my tic tac toe board. And I can say four pieces, four piece in pieces, right? So for each individual piece, inside my set of pieces, my list of pieces. So now piece will be something that changes every time I run through this for loop. I want to draw. All right, so if I if piece is an X, then I want to draw across, and if piece is an O, I want to draw a naught. So that's an if statement, isn't it? Because if one thing is true, then I want to do something with it. So if piece is an X, then I know I'm going to want to draw across. And I've got an X and a Y value that I need to figure out in a moment for that. LF basically says else if piece is equal to an O, uh, not an, of course I want to draw a naught, but I will want to draw it at the same position. Now the reason I didn't just do else is because there are three possible values. There's the X, there's the O, and there's the empty. So I don't just want to automatically draw a naught if there's no x. So the elif says, so if this is true, do this. Otherwise, if otherwise or else, if this is true, then do this. And then I can still have my else as my failsafe at the end. You know, print doing nothing much here. Okay, or whatever. Okay, uh, if you don't need the else, you can just leave it off. We'll leave it on now. So that is pretty close to being done, except I now need to work out my x and y position, how that's going to change. So where where I start and then how I move as I move across the board. So for my very first position. X will start. Okay, so this was zero zero, so minus 100, 200, 200. 300 to, for that first square, so minus 300, and the y position there is positive 300 because up 100, 200, 300 to get to that top left corner. Okay, and if I run that, that will work, except it won't draw them all in the right spot. It will just draw them all over at the top of each other. But I will get a combination of noughts and crosses all being drawn in that one square. Oh, pieces is not defined because I've spelt it differently. Yeah, you get good at being consistent with your spelling as you learn to program. So I'll get an X now, and I'll get an, an O, then I'll get another X, and I've got my nothing much here, comments whenever it hits the empty one. <coughs> so all I need to do now is increment my X and Y position. So after I've drawn my piece, I want to move into the next square, right? And to do that, I can just say x add 200. So whatever number is currently in x, add 200 to it, and then save that calculation result back into x. Well, that's all well and good, but I'm still even going to hit a problem. Can you work out what that problem is? And the problem is that I'm not increasing my y value. I just keep drawing off the side here. In fact, if I keep stretching this out, we will have more x's and o's. 
All right, that one's missing because we had a blank. So what I need to do is when my x gets bigger than a certain value, uh, I don't want to keep going off the side here. I want to reset my x back to this to this horizontal starting point and then change my y, my vertical, to be for the next box. So if x here is minus 300, minus 100, positive 100, then as soon as x is bigger than positive 100, that's when I need to do my reset. So I can do an if for that. If x is larger than 100, I'm going to set x back to negative 300, and I'll take whatever's in my y value, and I'm going to subtract 200 from it. And you know, I think I am done. Let's see, moment of truth. Yes. Don't forget I had my blank, that's why that missed out. Okay, and we can see that X has won this game. Three X's in a row. My two blanks are in the correct spots. Okay, so new thing. Uh, we have the greater than symbol here happening. All right, if you, let's just create a comment here. So we've got greater than, we also have greater than or equal to. We have less than, we have less than or equal to, and we have not equal to. And of course, if uh, to test for is equal to is the double equal sign. So those are the signs that you are going to use when you're running your if statements. But there we go, we are using a list to store our values uh, for the different pieces of the board, and we are using if statements and a for loop through the list. Uh, and we've also introduced ellipse. So quite a few things in this one little video. Quite a compact, powerful little video for you there. What happens if I change these around? Will my board automatically adapt? Uh, zero. Zero, whoops, okay, I can't use lowercase o because I'm testing here for uppercase. Remember, Python is case sensitive. All right, if I run this, <coughs> I should get x, 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 zero, 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 x, x, zero. All right, that's uh, quite a few things in that little video. Uh, as of now, I would say, if so if you're one of my students, uh, you are probably in the position where if you want to move across to experimenting with Pygame, you can move across to that series of videos now. You've gained the understanding, the, uh, un the knowledge you need to be able to move forward with that. If you want to stick with using Turtle, then in the next couple of Turtle videos, I will show you how you can uh, get Turtle to respond to the keyboard and mouse. That's it for me. This is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.